I will be doing, I will do the introduction and then um, Melanie will take over going into the topic of the autism. So who are we and why do we speak about uh, uh, autism? So we are Neurofeedback Luxembourg. These are the four people, which is not true since this week because we got two people who joined us this week. We're not on the photo, but yeah. uh, you, you well, will see I them. didn't have any time to add them. No, 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 no. that will take some time. Um, so we, uh, myself, I'm Francois Alphys. I founded Neurofeedback 10 years ago. I scanned over uh, 2,000 brains and helped over yeah, almost 2,000 brains to get better. And there were a lot of autistic uh, cases in uh, amongst these 2,000. Uh, Melanie, who will be present a part about autism, is a certified neuro, uh, type of neuropsychologist from uh, Strasbourg and Lou is still working with the clients in our practice and Patrick is the the man behind the scenes the problem solver and the managing director okay um, let's go into it who comes to us who with who we deal every day um, the first category is about learning and developmental disabilities and there we have a lot of uh, overlapping with ADHD and autism, um, oh, but also high potential, uh, high intellectual potentials and hypersensitivity people. But uh, and the second topic category, we put them under this umbrella of stress and emotional distress is also very related to the topic of the day, which is uh, autism, so anxiety, depression. PTSD, sleep, and obsessive uh, compulsive uh, behaviors, uh, which are quite often seen in autistic people too. And so and then the three, third category is about more instabilities and brain alterations mm -hmm. is more serious thing. Epilepsy, there's also a link between uh, seizures uh, uh, and uh, autism, migraine, and some other things. And then we also have people who are coming to us just for the performance and the optimization. So there we talk more about burnout, boards, improving performances, and so on. We are located in Luxembourg, in the heart of Europe, and we are located in the city of Luxembourg, um, near the, 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 the GAR, so uh, centrally. We are really easily reached by tram and public transportations. One specificity which often people don't get is we don't have a secretary to respond to the calls and our practitioners are quite busy actually. So you need to take an appointment to talk to us. We are able to respond to emails but not to answer uh, calls or just you cannot um, pass by to have, an, to have a chat with us. We would like to, but actually it's not possible. Um, so we did uh, invest quite a lot of energy in our new website. I hope you found it and you liked it because we like it very much. And since we published it online, we got a lot of positive feedbacks especially um, the, the website will be extended, um, but I really um, invite you to, to, have, to read, uh, especially, for example, the sections like the FAQ, the frequency asked questions. Normally you will find the, the most common questions will be there. If you have more specific questions, then head over to our website and ask for a free teleconsultation where we can talk more specifically about your conditions. But please read some text before. It will be then faster and easier for everyone. <laughs> okay, now, Melanie, it's okay, up to you. Let's jump into it. <laughs> Hope you are ready and you have your brain, re your brain ready. <laughs> So for about history uh, of the term uh, autism, a lot of people knew about Leo Kanner. Uh, this one is the, the well-known one. Let me put my mouse. Okay. So this one is the most common known from a lot of people, but there was before someone that introduced this term autism. That is a doctor in 1911, so quite early, quite way before uh, Leo Kanner. Leo Kanner is known because he was the first one publishing a story, like story slash study, 
uh, when he was observing 11 kids. Uh, then there is the famous Dr. Hans Asperger that gave the name to one of the profile of autism that today we don't say it anymore. Uh, and then the one that is not well known is Dr. Lorna Wing. And she was the one using the, the name of the doctor, Dr. Hans Asperger, to speak about Asperger syndrome. Uh, because Hans Asperger was working with what we call high functional autism, but uh, it's not the good, the right term anymore. We, we speak about more of the spectrum. I will, I will explain to you later why. So about data. Oh, Francois. Yes. Yes. Uh, are we streaming on Facebook? Yes, it's working. I have the video on. And okay, then fine. I don't, okay, then look good. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Already. <laughs> All done. Uh, about the data, uh, we wanted to speak more about it because we were also the first one that were quite shocked by uh, the data evolution. So... The typical one, it's uh, the autism is something that appears in the beginning of your life and will stay all your life. It's like ADHD. It's like a lot of developmental disorder. It's not popping out when you are 30 years old out of nowhere. So you're basically born with it almost. Uh, we know that it's more common in males than in females as uh, ADHD. It's the same. And so in the 90s and before, they estimated one to five out of 10,000 people that were diagnosed with ASD. And what is interesting in, uh, so it was in USA, and I found the super recent last one in 2023. Uh, they have uh, made studies, so you, ha you can find um, more detail on the internet if you write down the name here about the TACA, Autism Community in Action, there is a prevalence uh, increased uh, since the 2000, uh, quite high. So my first thought was, yeah, of course, because we know better autism, we're better at diagnosing it, so it makes sense. But they tried to see if that was linked to it, and she, they, 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 study, they were um, studying the... Um, the diagnostic criteria and all the tests, and they haven't changed a lot. So it's still the same. There is more knowledge for sure about the spectrum, but apparently these data are not linked to a better knowledge of autism. So th the increase looks real, not linked to our knowledge. So it's the, the, the conclusion of this study was quite, was quite concerning because it's, it's increasing way too fast and a lot. Uh, and so we, I looked for Luxembourg, how many people, so around 6,300 people are affected. And in 2020, I don't have more, uh, more precise data for this year, the foundation, the Autism Foundation in Luxembourg received uh, almost 300 diagnostic requests. So it's a lot. Okay, what is interesting information about that is the Foundation Autism uh, provides uh, a free diagnostic, uh, which ha they have, a, I think, a severe waiting list, um, but they do it for free and it's a longer process. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, diagnosis is always long because you need to check a lot of things, IQ, if your earring is working well, if your view is good, if you don't have any uh, problem in the head, like uh, other diagnosis that can cause symptoms that will look like autism, etc., to see the causes of your symptoms. So it can be quite long and sometimes expensive, depends. But yeah. I think it's worth doing it uh, because I did my diagnosis for ADHD and Francois can speak about his experience too. And it's super relieving to understand why you're feeling so different, why you can't do stuff so easily as other people. Like you don't feel weird or stupid anymore. It's just you understand that you're like this and you know what to do about where you have difficulties. So I think it's worth it. But <laughs> you don't need a diagnosis to be recognized for your difference. So that's okay too. 
Um, so autism is basically a developmental disorder like ADHD, and it's not on, always visible. It's not written here that you have autism or ADHD, like you're walking, breathing, eating, thinking, doing stuff when you don't have any IQ uh, problem and any developmental issue like motor learning problems or so. It's not on the head. It's small detail and difficulty in specific domain that you can have. Uh, why we call it spectrum? Because it's, it is super, super different from one person to another. The vari variety of symptoms, the severity, you won't find one people with autism the same as another one. Even if they have the same age, same sex, same area, and it's the same for ADHD. Some are more able to compensate or to mask their symptoms, some not, and have a lot of difficulty at school or for social life or uh, with the sensory uh, domain. So it really depends. And when you have autism, you are not all the time super intelligent or with developmental delays. There is an in-between that you have a normal IQ. So that's also important to let you know. Uh, about the symptoms, so these are the well best known and the easier to spot when you have a baby that has a high uh, autism, uh, a lot of symptoms with uh, a high severity. But for a lot of other ones, if you are not specialized in it, maybe you will miss it. So this is just a, a list that is non-exhaustive about what you can observe with kids in their early development. But a lot of kids have, don't have this kind of sign. So it's not just this one. Uh, you have other, other symptoms. So the first sign for those symptoms happen quite uh, early, but not systematic. And you may, they may show also other specific uh, impaired social interaction, communication difficulties, behavioral problems, sensory, unusual sensory reaction, cognitive problems, De depends the severity. And also baby can be too quiet, too restless, indifferent to the world. Like they, the, the most known is when you try to, to talk to them, they are not uh, looking you into the eyes, they are not answering their first name, they are not interacting. They are in their own world. Uh, they don't have a lot of facial expression. They have problems with some textures, foods. They love to uh, put in line object or spin them. They have like super weird or strange specific interests for some of them, but it's not always the case. And of course, unfortunately, with the developmental disorder, there is comorbidity. So if you have ADHD or one of those in the list, you have also a high chance of getting uh, autism and it's, it's working on the opposite way too. So autism as ADHD, it's super rare that it comes alone. Uh, then depends which which diagnosis has the more severe, the more the more severe symptoms. So sometimes you have a lot of um, autism symptoms and a few ADHD one that are like if you try to get a diagnosis, it will be negative. But it can still add difficulty with your profile. Now about the data. Uh, and the, the cause, the etiology of autism, what are the risk factors? The more we study and we explore the cause, the more we know there is a high, high impact in the health in general of the environment. It's not, this one is, is linked to autism because they've tried to, to make study, but if you have a look in Alzheimer, in diabetes, in ADHD, cancer, whatever, there is a, a, a fact, it's that our environment is getting sometimes too toxic. So endo endocrine perturbator, uh, like toxic stuff in the food, too much sugar, uh, like imbalanced stuff. So this one is well known in the, the scientific community. So it's not a causality 
uh, it's not a causality. They have to, they, they, they try to find a, a link between the pesticide and uh, some developmental issue. So it's just a correlation because they don't understand the mechanism and they don't, they haven't found where the link between the both are, but it's interesting to see that toxicity impacts early development in child. And that works for a lot of a lot of things. So just to, to give you uh, an input on that, uh, this one is from, they've done it until 2010. So it's not the most recent, but it's interesting to know. Um, I see just a question. So Yarish is asking, is it really very important not to miss the first sign of autism if it does not go away anyway? Uh, yeah, good question. So um, it's better not missing it because then your hard everyday life can get hard when you grow up. You don't understand yourself and others don't understand yourself. Then it depends. Sometimes people are super good at masking it and it doesn't add difficulty. Uh, it depends on the severity. If the early you are able to see it, the early you can do something about it to improve the, the, the everyday life. Because so that, yeah, that, that's the that thing. Yeah. The most important part is to start early. So yeah. Don't wait. You gain nothing if you wait. Everything which can be done before 12 years old is great. Yeah. It's not because impossible after. We helped adults, yeah. even yeah. adults, to get almost out, no, to get out of the spectrum. They don't fulfill any more the, the, the conditions, but it's easier if you start early. Yeah. And for example, I know it's a lot of case with ADHD and autism. Sometimes people can manage their life and they don't, we don't, the, we, the, they don't see like doctors or school or parents that there is something strange because they are able to manage things. But as the difficulty increased in life, in school, why, what society is waiting or asking you, then it, you can get to a point where you can't manage everything together and you can like sometimes adult autistic adult with autism uh, that didn't get diagnosed early uh, they they can fall into burnout or anxiety without understanding why there is no cause their life was okay there is no matter even and so they can get lost kind of lost in life so to avoid that it's better if you can uh, if you can uh, see if there is something to do with developmental disorder to avoid that kind of uh, event. So hope it answers yes. your question. And, 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 and even uh, because we often see people who have uh, who are on the spectrum who um, got uh, lots of different diagnoses. Uh, PTSD, mm. depression, anxiety, generalized anxiety, uh, whatever uh, diagnosis, but these are the symptoms. They are not the cause. The cause is the, the difficulty to adapt to the to the society. They try to adapt and then they burn out and then they yeah they, because they, they still adapt and it, it's asking them a lot of energy. So they need to know to understand what to do to avoid getting burnout about that. So yes. Not the case for all autistic people, fortunately, <laughs> but yeah, it's the, it's a high risk for the parent and then for the yeah yeah both yeah because if it's hard for the child, then it can be super hard at home. I'm sure there is people here that have kids a little bit different and can tell that everyday life is not super easy, uh, like more than an I would say a kid without a diagnosis. It, it depends. If the, sometimes we ask the if the parents are too much stressed and the kid is very young, then it makes sense that the parent starts, because the, at a young age, young children, how do they learn to cope with the world is by copying what they see, and the first models they have is their parents. So if the parents are stressed, 
then the, the, the children are stressed. Yeah. Uh, if, if, the, if the parents then they reduce their stress levels by doing whatever, neurofeedback or some other things, whatever, then the, the stress level at home will, will go down. Mm -hmm. uh, this facilitates yeah. the, the... That's the, the case group. for everybody. <laughs> Autism <Yes>. or not. <laughs> yes. Because we, we're not aware, but when we... Even an adult, if I'm here and I'm around anxious people, I will get nervous because the energy around you is too, is too much. So it's exactly the, the same. It can impact both ways. Like the stress of your kids will stress, stress you and on the opposite way, it's working too. And then when it's escalating, it's not good. So yeah, about the, the environment, this is uh, one of the, the causes the, that can that can have an impact in autism development. It's because toxin enters our body, unfortunately, and can affect the child development super early. Uh, so it's not easy to pay attention to that, but I, I know we can we can do stuff about it. So another one, uh, it's not only the environment like uh, autism as ADHD and a, a lot of things are multifactorial. So there is also a neurological uh, side. <coughs> I have three or four slides about it. So I won't go into detail because it's super, super precise stuff about brain. So maybe I don't want to lost everybody, <laughs> but that's uh, uh, one of the list of foundings, uh, what they found different in the brain of uh, people, adult and kids with autism that can explain some of the symptoms. And it's interesting to see that each difference in the brain may, uh, is responsible for what for one kind of symptoms on the social uh, side uh, with the emotion management with the anxiety the sensory issue etc so that's uh, super interesting to understand but it's interesting for me because uh, i love brain so maybe it's not the case for everybody that's okay but yeah that's that's one part uh, the one that is the more interesting is uh, this one uh, so that explain the network dysfunction in the brain that makes sense with what we do in neurofeedback because the type of neurofeedback we use, we will show you later, but we work with networks. And for example, the salience network that is uh, dysfunctioning in autism is one of the first we need to train and we're training with clients. Uh, so it helps with a cognitive process and enable adaptation to a social context. The list of what he does is super long, but that's one one. To, one to, to be short, it's the chef d'orchestre of your whole brain. It's the boss. It's the one. It, it and it's also the second function of the silence network, is to to check every information which comes in. Is it dangerous or not? And of course, yeah. if you have a filtering difficulty, then every information which comes in will be interpreted from the brain as a threat. This is dangerous and cannot yes, filter. With the amygdala. So every, everything is overwhelming. Yeah. Training the silence networks helps the people uh, to get there. But there's a second part, which is the mu rhythm. And I think you will yeah, talk I about it later. later. <laughs> yes, it will come later. So this one, I didn't know. So that was very in interesting information. Why? autistic people are more sensitive to anxiety than non-autistic people is because they amygdala. So the small part you see here that is a part of the limbic system about the emotion management is uh, reaching the adult sides at, which, at eight years old. So it's super, super young. Normally your brain will finish to be a grown up at 25, 30 years old for the frontal lobe. Uh, but yeah, so the, the amygdala is too big compared to the kid's brain size. And so what he, what's doing, it's increasing the anxiety, the fear response, more stress, etc. And that's uh, a part of responsible of what we call the sensory overwhelmed meltdown. So it has nothing to do with a kid that is being mean, that just want to like cry or scream or be annoying. It's just that because the brain is flooded by a stress response and is over over it and just can't handle it and that's the autistic crisis like meltdown we call that it's because the amygdala is too big so that was one of the information that was super interesting 
And then there is also other stuff on other level of the brain, like the cerebellum. That's what we have here behind under the, the brain back there. So it has less what we call Purkinje cell. And this can be uh, responsible for uh, autistic kids with balance uh, problem, like to walk and not fall, etc., with motor motor problem issue. And they they have found that when you have less Purkinje cell, it gives cerebral cognitive affective syndrome. It's something a little bit else on the side. They differentiate it that has a lot of impairment in the cognition. Uh, there is also the hippocampus deficit. Uh, so the mini column that's uh, if you if you slice your your brain like that don't do that but <laughs> if you slice it like this there is a column of neuron here if you if you from the surface to the deeper structure if you take a slice this is what we call mini condom so the unit of organization of the cells and it's too dense with autism so uh, they have too much close connection in area but they are lacking long fiber connection long distance yeah so it's, the, yeah. the brain is kind of noisy that like it, it's speaking too much locally everywhere but it's not speaking together and exchanging information on a long distance to balance everything so that's the problem also so that was very interesting and there is also some problem with neuronal receptor like a Just, lot of GABA no, no, the, the, the lack of GABA, the lack of GABA, this is the really, lack of GABA, sorry. <laughs> this is one of the major parts. What is GABA? GABA is the inhibition in the brain. Yeah. yeah. Almost 80% so... of the activity in the brain is inhibition. So, and uh, if you have a lack of GABA, it's like firework in the brain. So, the, yeah. the, and the inhibition Just doesn't work. The sleep doesn't... Yeah. A lot of the stuff. The sleep like doesn't that. work and uh, everything, yeah, you yeah. cannot, yeah. Yeah, the sleep is the worst, the first one affect, badly affected by the lack, lack of GABA. Um, and also, on then after the environment and neurological problems, what we see, there is also a lot of uh, genetic problem. So it's, n it's not as high as ADHD that has a high rate of genetics transmission. It's it's less uh, in 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 uh, ASD, but still this is a map of all the gene that have been now identified playing a role in autism by uh, the Institut Pasteur in France. So I won't try to read all the names, super weird name, but it was quite shocking. Uh, in the beginning, I, I didn't imagine so many so many genetic uh, difference. So, important to, to say is we don't want we put this information together and we are we were also surprised when we, we put all together that there are so many differences so uh, autism uh, being on the spectrum is not being a monster but there are way more differences than than you can imagine and, yeah. and this is crazy so and it's not visible it's not yeah. visible there is as many as different autism symptoms or profile as there is people on the world. So that's that's impressive. That's impressive. So then to take a break after that hard part, hope everybody's still there. <laughs> um, if you are living here in the area around Luxembourg, I've tried to find a lot of uh, area or uh, hospital services specialist. I think Francois, maybe I forgot to put some doctors or specialist name. Uh, oh yes, I, I would like. I would like to mention one psychologist, not psychotherapist. Yeah, I would like to add, uh, which I is Samantha, Samantha Rizzi. Oh is, right! Oh my God, I forgot about brought her. Yes, so because she is one of the few psychologists who really specialized in it, but is also concerned by it. Yeah, so, right. Uh, right. Uh, so she is uh, uh, really one of the person uh, where you can go through it and, and search for help. So maybe a few words. Um, I would also recommend for parents to not try to solve everything alone. And yeah. I would really like to, to, to mention Passage organization. Oh, yes. Uh, um, they are English speaking. Uh, they have meetings, they have uh, uh, activities, and yeah. um, uh, there are a lot of 
non-divergent people in there and yeah they, we met uh, them they have quite experience uh, on it uh, yes yeah we met them they are super nice it was super super yeah. great to meet them so definitely for the parents so you don't feel alone and you like having a high mental mental charge on your on your head it's it's great to 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 be with people that will understand you because the problem also is that when you are different or when your kids are different, you will be judged all the time and people don't understand. They are not aware of disorders and I've, it's super hard for the, the mood. The, 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 the phenomenon autism is largely under known and is mis misjudged by lots of people and oh is, God, yes. it's not a, it's not an education problem it's not a, no. a, a, it's not a discipline problem no. no it is not and but but you will be confronted with lots of of judging yes, yeah of judging. Same, with ADHD, and, uh, same yeah like you don't try uh enough you don't do that enough you should do this and, 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 uh, always 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 okay. so don't yeah. stay alone uh, I don't know why this slide moved. <laughs> it was supposed to be a little bit later, but anyway, I didn't see that. We walked too much. Uh, this is some studies about neurofeedback and autism. It was supposed to be done with the neurofeedback topic, but anyway, no. if no. you are interested in looking about study, case study, more uh, other study, they are more recent, more older, but super interesting the case study especially uh, you can have a look at that about neurofeedback and autism it's not yeah. new <laughs> so no no and it, it's one of the major uh, interventions you can do but we will come to that later yeah about intervention what you can do <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, do you want to do you want to go with the eg part or do you want me to continue Oh, okay. I, can, I can do I can do this one I can do okay. this one. Okay. Go and um, go and give me the lead when you're tired. <laughs> yes, okay. So what 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 will happen typically? So first the the biggest chance that will happen if you are not confronted with people who have knowledge about these conditions is you will get misdiagnosed. So you will get misdiagnosed and then you will get also medicated. There is no medication for autism. Um, but the, the thing where you will find most often uh, is uh, there will be uh, anti-anxiety uh, solutions, anti-anxiolytics, antidepressant, even antipsychotic, which, yes, they stabilize, but they cut you off your emotions, they stabilize you, but they cut off the fun in life too. And then this, the other part is because we have a, so much, such a big overlap with ADHD, and mostly they they come together often, very very often. Um, then you will be you will be uh, uh, also medicated with uh, what we call uh, um, uppers, so Ritalin, Medikinet, Elvanza, uh, depending on the doctors you will find uh, would uh, yeah will prescribe different things. Um, one thing which works for autism, and uh, we don't see it a lot in our clients. I, I think I never had one autistic or someone on the on the spectrum who got the oxytocin spray. What is oxytocin? Oxytocin is an organ, this is a neurotransmitter, um, which is uh, related to the connecting and feeling together with people. Example, oxytocin is released when the baby uh, knuckles on the breast of his mother, oxytocin is released in the mother and in the baby, and that creates the connection part. And clearly that's missing in, 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 the, uh, in the people on the spectrum. Another thing which is more not medical, but uh, complement supplements uh, is really helpful is omega-3, vitamin D, uh, probi probiotics, because the second part of the brain is one of the major input also, and you can have not you cannot heal anyway. You cannot heal it, but for some people it will really make a difference. It, it's a difference if you take this supplement. So, on the therapy part, you have often more um, uh, behavioral therapy or cognitive therapy. You, but also uh, there is also the sensory integration in Luxembourg. We have a lot of. Um, uh, psychomotricien, uh, for example, which is reimbursed, and then that you will find easy. 
Um, in, in Germany, we will more often find ergotherapeuten. Uh, in, in Luxembourg, this is not so common. There are some, but they are not reimbursed. So it depends also on the country where you are and what is uh, prescribed. And that is varying really uh, depending on, on the laws. So um, all these things happen, help, help, but they work on, on, on a symptom level. They don't go to the cause. And th this is where uh, what we do comes in. Uh, this is the neurotherapy because they are, because there we work on, on, on the brain. This is not the cause, the cause we have talked about, but this is the, the, the show where everything happens. So this is the brain and the nervous system. There are lots of different tips, types of neurofeedback. Um, uh, there is the slow cortical potential is more often done in, in, in Germany, but not, not so much here. There is the infra low, the infra slow, which is really the most, in, one of the most uh, best indicated for uh, uh, people on the spectrum. Loretta Z score, this is what we do because we like it uh, uh, because it gets result fast. And I mean really fast. Um, but sometimes it's uh, it needs to be dosed. Uh, several people, several brains don't tolerate it, mm. or not so fast, or we have to do shorter sessions or more uh, time. We have enough um, experience to be able to judge what will be the right thing, and then we monitor closely what happens. Then there are two other things: the hemo, the hag, the hemo to hemoencephalography. Um, uh, which we, which I use, but we don't use anymore. I think we will re reinstall it because it's it's quite uh, an easy uh, way of doing neurofeedback. And movements are not so important. It's putting sensors on the prefrontal part of the of the brain, and it helps. It measures the blood flow, the irrigation of the brain, and by training that, and it's short sequences of twenty minutes, and after you're really tired, it's it's quite good if you have functional uh, if the prefrontal cortex is not working so well or if you have migraines then it's the way to go um, then also neurostimulation we will talk about that we have different types of neurostimulation we do uh, especially uh, the, the one which is actually uh, researched the most is the photobiomodulation uh, which is the one who helps to restore and to repair the brain mm -hmm. So, why neurotherapy? Because we want to uh, look at the organ uh, we want to help. And this is uh, often not done by some medical specialists about mental health. They don't analyze the organ they are treating. Uh, that's Daniel Amen, a famous neuro uh, 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 psychiatrist from the US who tells that I like really this 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 sentence okay the brain is one of our most important organ it's the master of, of everything so it's the coordination and the, the 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 mental part which is the problem in the people on the spectrum it's overactive over analyzing over 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 this is only less than 10 percent most of the brain activity 90 percent is unconscious while we are talking here, your brain regulates your blood, your sugar, your every every everything in your organ, every organ in your in your body, is regulated by the brain, and it's regulated differently if you are in constant stress, if you're on the spectrum. So let's analyze it and listen to the brain because this is what usually is not often done. How yeah. can you listen to the brain? We use mainly electroencephalogram or EEG. What is that? Sounds nice, uh, big name. Um, it's, in fact, the, we, the, the brain has two systems. The chemical one, these are the neurotransmitters, the, 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 the serotonin, dopamine, and everything. The problem is you cannot securely measure them without putting a hole in the head and i i think you can imagine that that's not the practical way <laughs> but the second part is the electrical activity of the brain which can be measured by putting these nice caps on um, and then just recording what is going on in the brain so this is the electrical part the brain uses both and the electrical activity reflects what's going on the chemical part 
but um, it's at least easily done compared to other ways. You have, of course, other ways to look in the brain, like scanners, uh, fMRI, functional, um, uh, you have SPECT scans and whatever, but they are quite expensive uh, and um, they don't, you don't see what is going on in terms of connectivity. And in, uh, in the spectrum, we talk a lot about connectivity, as, as uh, Melanie mentioned it. We have an over local connectivity and a lack of big, long connectivity from one part of the other. Also, we have a difference between the broad, both hemispheres. The right hemisphere will be overactive, the left hemisphere will be underactive. One important part in the EG, and this is how the neurologist uh, sees it, we see it too, but we are not allowed to talk about and to diagnose it, but we see the things. If we see too much things like this, then we will tell the client, mm, maybe it's a good idea to have, a, to, to have an appointment with a neurologist. And we know a few who know what neurofeedback is, it is a pity, but only a few neuro neurologists uh, learned about neurofeedback and, and see it as an intervention. Um, these are things we expect to see in ADHD and autistic brain, but not too much. If they are too much, too regular, mm, that's, then, that's not good. That's not good. We will send them then to, to, to see a specialist to see if there's something going on. We are not specialists of that. Mm -hmm. but used exactly the same technique and the same uh, readings. But our interpretation is different. Why? <laughs> because we, uh, we, what we do is quantitative EEG or QEG. Why quantitative? Because it's, it's a comparison with a reference. It's exactly like a blood test. If you do a blood test, for example, for vitamin D, Vitamin D in the blood test should be between 30 and 140 microgram, whatever, per liter. Uh, and then so you have a reference. This is what we call is a normal distribution. And so if you have outliers like here too much or like here too much, then, okay, we will see that. And this has an, an, a, an, a, this is a clinical um, expression and which normally reflects into symptoms in your everyday life. Our work is to link the, the dysregulations in the brain with the problems you have in your life. And if we see a match between the dysregulations in the brain, your behaviors, uh, then we can act on it. If we don't see anything, we cannot, maybe we are not the right, neurofeedback or neurostimulation is maybe not the right thing. But, the, but, that didn't happen <laughs> till now. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> no. Do you want okay. me to, to go or are you good? Like I'm good, I'm fine. Okay, go. Okay, so uh, what do we see? We see the different type of brain waves. What is brain wave? Because um, I just want to go back here. Here you see one line. If you took, for example, I don't know if I if you see my, I take my this pointer. No, I don't take the private, uh, the pointer here. Here, for example, here you have a mix of different frequencies. Uh, this is not one. And what we do by quantifying an EEG is we, dis we, di we um, dissolve this mixed component into the different uh, parts which compose it. And this is part from slow waves to fast waves to very fast waves. And now, just for your information and to get a little bit used to our uh, language we use, we talk that every day, brain waves, that's our language. Um, you give a short overview of that. You don't have to remember, learn everything. But I know normally people on the spectrum, if they know, if they love one thing, is they understand. I think their preferred question is why? Is <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, then try to give some input. Here you have a, a small, uh, this is like how the delta, these are really the slowest waves we produce in our brain, looks like. They are irregular, they are big, uh, and you don't want them when you are awake because they correspond to the sleep of, uh, to the state of sleep or coma. Uh, and they are generated in the brain stem, so the, 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 the one of the oldest part of the brain. And they are more linked to 
to to things you don't want to have. So if you have too much slow waves, that means what? Either your brain is not matured, so parts of the brain are too fast, others are not matured, or the brain is sleeping or is repairing itself. So if you have too much uh, delta, that normally is a sign that the brain is not developed like it should be, or it is on inflammation or things like that. If it's not enough, uh, if you have a lack of, of delta, mostly, mostly, but can be also other things, uh, there are also some hormonal things, uh, mostly it's a lack of sleep. That's the most common reason. If you don't have enough delta waves, it means that you are exhausted and normally you don't have enough sleep. Is that the cause? Is that the, the symptom? Can I have a long discussion about that? It's not useful. But we can change it. So um, the second one, these are the, the theta waves. You see, they, they get a little bit more regular, but they are still uh, not, uh, not regular like the alpha. You will see us next. The theta uh, are still slow with 4 to 8 hertz oscillations. So for all uh, the they oscillate four to eight times uh, uh, per second in the brain. Um, they are coming from the limbic system, but they are also linked to uh, not, not all negative things. For example, creativity is theta, or um, um, uh, uh, example, if you are going to a concert and you watch a group of musician, musicians playing, um, to to not play jazz, to be synchronized, their brain synchronized in theta. That allows them to play nice music, what we like. If you have too much theta, like my brain, or ADHD, then yeah, we have some concentration problem. That's I think that's my brain. <laughs> Um, yes, it's the, it's the easiest one for the theta because you have too much. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. I recognize myself, clearly. Yeah, I know. Um, That's you. And if, if you have not enough, oh, then you have, uh, you have problems relaxing. And you will also have memory problems because memory consolidation is also happening in theta. Without theta, your brain, your memories cannot consolidate. You cannot build new memories. You will have problems. Then again, it's depending where they are located and how much, and that's why we need these brain maps. Also, we need we will need to talk about connectivity, but that's yeah. another topic. Yeah, I could have put ten image per each brain waves for all the symptoms, but it's gonna be for hours a webinar. So. <laughs> Exhausting. Yeah, yeah. And now we come to more preferred brain waves, which are the alpha waves. So they are more sinusoidal. So they are more rounded. Not if the alpha gets sharp, mm, that's not good. That's another yep. topic. Alpha brain waves goes from nine to twelve hertz, but you can also find alpha at fifteen hertz. Then you are in a highly anxious state, but you can also have alpha at five uh, yeah, uh, hertz. <laughs> then your brain, your whole brain, is slowed down. How do we find out? Looking at where they come from, if they they need to be uh, they need to be uh, localized from where they come from, then we can see what it is. Uh, so, and we also call the alpha waves the feel well uh, uh, brain waves. Why? Because when you do, for example, yoga, meditation, that generates alpha, or also some substances some people like, like alcohol yep. or cannabis, THC, that also produce alpha. The problem is, it's the dose who makes the poison, like Paracelsus said. So if you have too much alpha, oh, then you are either absent, you are not there, or you're depressed, or you have brain fog. Or, well, yeah. And if you have not enough alpha, a lack of feel well brain waves, it's, you're not happy. It's difficult to feel good, positive emotions if you have a lack of alpha. This is, this is for example, this is how it looks depression in the brain. That's a typical depression, depressive brain. Yeah. Yep, super bad one. Yeah. 
Then we come into uh, no, this is still okay. Oh, the new brain nurse. Is yeah, it here? You want to talk? I okay. Here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't put. Uh, I should have put uh, pictures with new. Yes. Okay. The, because because it's only on the um, C three, C four motor strip. Motor cortex stripe. Right. Yeah. The, the, this for you, there's no different. For you, maybe it's difficult to make the difference between this and this, but we are used to see that. Um, and the mu brain waves is a really interesting topic because there are three populations who have that. Normally, for normal people, it's really elite sports people. I speak elite, not the, not the Sunday fitness goer. No, uh, um, I speak about Olympia and Olympic sport, uh, sports people. They have mu brain waves because, but they control it. Uh, the other two conditions who have where we see often brain uh, mu brain waves is ADHD again and autism. Yep. Why? Because it's the filtering difficulty of the brain, and you see it like two dots in the brain maps. When you have two dots, yes, yeah. your brain cannot filter. Uh, it's in, in it's in it's in the motor strip, but it's about filtering. It's about perception, and mu brain waves is something I don't know. But I see it more and more and more often. Uh, uh, it's too often. Uh, I and don't know why. It's they are not moving a lot when they are here. Like nope. they are nope. super persistent. That's what I, what we see, and it's not it's not normal. They no. should. It's not. Fine. It's not clinical. It's not a clinical sign. So you have no. Uh, uh, it's not pathogen. It's not. Uh, yeah. uh, but but the person has problems. problems. To interact and to, to perceive the outside world that's the problem yep. the sports people why do they have it because they are able to to forget what's around them and then to to do their competition so but they have a control over the new brain waves they can produce them yeah and the other people they are uh, 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 suffering from that that's yeah. the difference but in the brain it looks the same so we have to check that uh, for how do we check that uh, it's easy if we ask them to imagine if they move, if they go away, the new brain waves, then they're healthy new brain waves. If they stay, yes. Good. Then we come to a really important rhythm, which is called SMR, sensory motor rhythm, which is 12 to 15 hertz. This is the stabilizing rhythm. If you don't sleep well, SMR. If you are too tense, SMR. And SMR is above uh, the alpha, but it's a really, uh, it's, it, it's, it, it's an in between. Yeah, it's an in between, but they are generated on a different, different part. It's from the cortex coming, and it's, stab it's the stability rhythm. So if you don't know what to train, train uh, SMR. Yeah. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Imagine here the cat. That is why the Melanie put the cat in the in the uh, It was not me. It's Lou. Okay, that's, uh, it was Lou. Okay, then uh, um, uh, the SMR corresponds to the to the state, like a cat in front of a mouse uh, hole or a mouse. Yeah. Yeah. She she wanna. She's in front of it, but she's not gonna. She's in front. It. So she's not. The cat is not tense. But if the mouse points out the nose out of the hole, so alert, alert, but not tense. And this is what exactly is missing the ADHD people and the, uh, and the, 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 the people on the spectrum. Yep. They can either they go into hyper or nothing. And they don't have anything between. The in-between is the SMR. Mm. Being here. Being reactive, but not overreactive. Not relaxed, like prison, yes. but relaxed. Not not sleeping, not overactive. It's just. And, and <sighs> most of these people don't even know what this state is because they never experienced it. <laughs> and and in our sessions, they experience it. That's that's quite. I'm too slow. Now you relax. Now you're out of anxiety. You're not too slow, but it's just new to you. <laughs> that's yeah, my that's best, my preferred answer when I say I was too slow. <laughs> I love no. that. I'm like, yes, no, you were not. <laughs> okay. And then we come into the beta. You, you see here the brain waves are not so regular. They are, but this is a, a good state. Beta is the largest uh, 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 
frequency we have it goes from 13 to even some some tell it from 25. 12 to 25 depends on who you listen who you ask to um, I hope that you actually when you're listening to us in beta state so that means that you are awakened and you're able to process information so and learn and yeah. this is all happening in in beta if you go above 20 hertz then you want to stress so 20 hertz uh, um, what we call we have a protocol called clarity protocol this is the 16 to 19 yes. if you put that on then people say oh wow oh i am awake oh i'm here oh oh cool that's nice <laughs> that's nice yeah but not stressed not anxious yeah. that's exactly just being so super it, efficient like yes. the, the brain is working like that super easy yes exactly okay so um this is a nice example how anxiety looks like more That's my brain than yours <laughs> so it looks for you for you it looks the same but the difference is the frequency the localization is the same is the red same red dot but an, an over too much again too much of smr you are into stress so it's the dose who makes the poison and if you have not enough this if you have this in more frequencies from from the slow to the fast then you're in a burnout or a bore yeah. out, which is the same for the brain. Not enough challenge or too much challenge. It brings exactly the same. We also saw a lot of clients who have in born bore out. So it makes the same symptoms than the burnout. Mm. Then we come, as we are getting faster, you see the, the, the waves are getting more spiky, uh, more, more, more yeah. picky. Um, uh, I like to already, always, I like to show the clients how the, the raw brain waves look like because this is the best reflection of how the person feels. If you have more brain waves than this, uh, then you get stressed. It's not relaxed. Um, so this is like uh, how a hyperactive, hyper vigilant anxiety, or maybe even inflammation. Because if you stay too long in the hyper vigilant, uh, the anxious state, at one moment it will become inflammation. This is the head of a client that tell us was feeling relaxed. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't want to know how you feel then when you're anxious, like really anxious. That's super bad. We need to have more, more scales to, to yeah. adapt to the new level of stress we see because in society. Because with that brain, I would be, I don't know, like doing a panic attack <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. So the problem is, uh, what, what people don't realize is staying in that state, they like it because it's high intensity. Ah, they have the impression of control of everything. But the problem is, this everything today is about energy. This, this, uh, if it would be money, you would be bankrupt because you spend more money, you spend more energy than you have. And you will end like this. The, this brain... If it continues over a long time, it will end like this. And then you will have no more energy to do anything. Because it will work, 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 that way, that way, that way, that way, until the day you say it's done. It's, it's enough. Done. It's enough. And then that's when cl clients arrive to our clinic office. Yeah. Uh, it's after, after yeah. that. Okay. And then if you go above 20 hertz, uh, then we go into this... This is uh, beta spindles. This is an irritated brain. The, 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 the specific thing about this, uh, the uh, benzodiazepines, they make that in the brain. Oh, yeah. They are the worst yes. of the brain, the benzo. No. Benzo is I'm really not relaxed. nice for the brain. You feel relaxed, but in fact, it's not really good for you. Yeah, brain. yeah. The brain don't like them at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have another rhythm, which is more difficult to see because you really need to go deep this is the gamma rhythm i call it the eureka rhythm this is when you combine you understand that there's a link between this and this oh i got it that's gamma when you understand things but gamma is also generated in the cortex but it's a specific uh, uh, brain waves in the term that it doesn't travel it's localized and so this is also the link maybe uh, yeah of often we see too much uh, or persistent gamma this is what called uh, persistent thalamocortical uh, thalamo dysrhythmia. 
that leads to a lot of different things like pain, tinnitus, and other things. So it's not a topic for another time. Long-term meditators, this is funny too, long-term meditators, I speak about people who are meditating uh, 10 hours a day during 20 years, they are in gamma, but they are not irritated. So that's another level that's completely different. Mm -hmm. So what are the... What are the uh, that is specific in autism. That was more general, the presentation yes. with okay. the brain, what, what, but that is what, specific. Okay, maybe we explain a little bit biomarker. Biomarker means what we can measure, what is specific to the condition of the autism. So what we will see. First one is epileptoform, like I saw you. When there's too much of that, we will send you to the neurologist. Um, but normally what we see, if there's... Uh, um, when you do neurofeedback, this tend to go away. If they don't go away, then, okay, maybe there's inflammation or there are other things, hormonal things or whatever. The mu pattern, this is the one, the filtering problem. We see the too much high beta, the overactivation going up to spindle, which is not really good. We have communication, coherence. What is that? Coherence, I explained to my clients like that. This is the way how the information flows into the brain. It's really simplified, but it's easy to grasp. Um, so we see a lot of hypo, not enough connectivity, or hyper, too much connectivity, or specifically the right side and the parietal lobe. We also see, we spoke about the delta. Too much delta means the brain has not been matured or has been damaged or is not working like it should. We also see, this is quite common, this is not nice. We have a few kinds of this. This is a low voltage, slow EG. Then when everything looks flat in our screen, um, that's not good. Uh, so these people cannot relax. They are never in the moment and things like that. We also have the slow alpha or the fast beta. So this is when the whole brain, the whole rhythm in the brain is over uh, uh, too fast or too slow. The lack of alpha is also something which is related to restless and things like that. The alpha peak and peak frequency. So this is where you where you you have the most energy where the where the brain waves across the brain synchronize. I will see that the event related potential is something this is more used by the psychiatrist and the neurologist. We will start to work with that in the future, not now because you have too many other things to do. Um, and in another it, life when we have time, <laughs> yes. Um, the gamma band, also the persistent gamma. We will, we will watch, we will search for persistent gamma. Gamma is localized but should never be persistent. That's not good. So, what we do with all these findings? Now we have listed all the abnormalities, what is different, what is what can be shown. So, how can we help that? We can help that by training the brain. Neurotherapy is a combination of neurofeedback, which is like a fitness, the gym for the brain, where, because the brain is like a muscle, it can be trained. You go... Uh, I, I like the idea of some clients say, oh, I go to the gym to stay fit, but I don't do anything for my brain. So this <laughs> this is a way to, to stay fit and to do something with the brain. There are different types of neurofeedback. Not, it's not protected, and the people outside the clients cannot make the difference. There are different types. Just to give you a comparison, um, there is a clinic 200 meters from here. They do neurofeedback also but they train one or two values with one or two electrodes. In our trainings, we use 24 electrodes and we train over a thousand parameters, same time. And the brain is absolutely capable of, of, of regulating this. Neurofeedback is not new. Even it's new for you, that doesn't mean it's new in the world. The proof, the first proofs um, has been done uh, um, by I just Barry Stemann is the second one. The first one was the one with the um, alpha waves. Um, uh, I don't... Hans Berger, no, no, he saw he saw the alpha waves. The first one who trained, oh. the, the, um... let me let me I will find it again because uh, I, will, I will the guy who, who, who proved that by will you can, if I give you a signal, you can discriminate if you're in alpha state or not. Uh, oh, uh, this sharp cotton, cotton. That no, was no, no, no. The neurofeedback. No, I will oh. come back. 
it will yeah, come yeah. back. Okay. Barry Stillman was the first one who Camilla. trained. Yeah, Camilla, Joey Camilla, Joey exactly. Joey he, Camilla. He, died, he died He died not so long ago. There's an excellent work, a book uh, written by Colura about, uh, about the work of Joey Camilla. Joey Camilla was the first one who, who proved um, that you can learn to, to control, to, uh, first to feel the alpha and then to take control. The problem was, it was in the 60s, then came the whole hippies and they said, oh, nice, we will do something funny with that. And uh, it, it has been, um, it, came, it came to a bad, bad reputation due to what the hippie and the claims that were made at that time, because everyone, oh, alpha neurofeedback is the solution for everything. No, it's not. Alpha is one of the most important rhythm in the brain, but it's not the solution for everything. Not everyone will need alpha or can tolerate yeah. alpha. Yeah. Okay. So what we do is the, the Loretta Z score 19 channel. So go deep, working on the connectivity and not working on amplitude. Yes, thank you for putting, but can you put it the link in English? Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it that it was the French one, that's the English one. <laughs> yeah. We now have the, 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 our web page translated by uh, machine learning in more languages. Uh, sorry, it's not perfect, but at least it exists. So, yeah, how does that it, it does gain us sometimes, and so information is available for you in various languages. Even if it's not perfect, it's still totally understandable. So, we'll yes, take time to go on it more better, but can still, still yeah. have a look. So, how does it work? So, to control something, to gain control over something, you have to measure it. Otherwise, you are doing something else, but it's not useful. So the brain waves are always measured. Every session where you do neurofeedback, you get this cap on uh, with 19, elect uh, 19 active electrodes. We measure the whole brain activity. In real time, it is compared to our um, databases, to our reference norm. And the work, the, the clients often ask us, but what do you do? You click and you do things on the, on the keyboard. What, what is it what you're doing? First, a, lot. We, we, a lot, a lot. We handle a lot of data in real time in the sessions. First, before the sessions, before your clients came in, we decide on the target, what will we train in the brain. And then in the session, we will manage the difficulty for the brain, which parameters are included in the brain, in the training, which are not excluded, which are too hard, which are, mo which are most important. And how do we know that? By experience. I think I, I estimated next, last time I did over 25,000 sessions. So I think we, 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 we know how. Oh, we got a new uh, um, Kobai to, to yeah, experiment. She's, she's waking up from the nap. She was sleeping. Okay. She won a cuddle. <laughs> so great. Um, so, and that, how do we then um, tell the brain what it should do? Example, in real time, we acquire the signal. The signal is then compared to the reference. Oh, it's too active, not active enough. This is way simplified, but it's like that. And then we, we the, the system, not we, but because we couldn't click at as, as fast. Um, just to give an idea, we have 50 milliseconds between we measure the signal and we give the feedback. And that is one of the key why neurofeedback works. works. It needs to be time sensitive. If you have too much delay between the feedback, the measurement and the feedback, then the brain cannot learn from it because the brain cannot regulate the past. It can regulate the present or the future, but yeah, even the future is not possible. So what when the brain is dysregulated, the screen gets dark, the sound gets modulated low. If the brain goes into the right state, for example, less anxiety, then uh, the image gets clear and the, uh, uh, the sound gets normal uh, loudness. For, you, for the client, it looks like he watches TV on a screen with a bad contact. So like that, something. Okay, but it's not, it's not a bad contact, it's his brain. And why? Because the brain doesn't want, it does the brain wants the film, the, the feedback to see the image clear and the sound clear. And once that is done, uh, then the image, uh, the brain regulates itself. So it's what we, I, I, I give often the image of, we 
lend our sensors to the brain so that the brain can regulate itself because the brain doesn't have any sensors about his any information about his own activity so it's a loop it's a, it's a also called closed loop feedback this is this is how the brain brain learns to self regulate by measuring and feeding the signal back to the brain what it does and then the brain does what it can do mainly regulating and it's no effort and it's un Conscious. There are other types of network uh, of neural feedback where you have conscious efforts to put in. Here it's like riding a bike. No one told you what muscle you have to do when you brake or to go to take a, a curve or to, to, to drive differently. So here the brain corrects itself. The brain knows how to do it. I don't know. Your brain does. Uh, it lasts over time, except for if it's neurodegenerative, the learning effect stays. Because this is also a question we got often. Yeah, but how, how does that help me, my problems in my everyday life? If I go watch a film and my brain learns into your practice how to regulate. Because it will change how the brain is wired. That's the, called the neuroplasticity. That, that lasts, that changes. Then comes also the neuromodulation part. What is that? Neuromodulation for me means we are also feeding information to the brain. So prior to start the neurofeedback training, when the brain learns to regulate itself, we are giving the brain an information what it should do. Example typically for or, or more often in, uh, in, in brains in the spectrum, they have often a lack of alpha, not always, but also some who have too much alpha, but okay. They have a lack of alpha. If they have a lack of alpha, how do we know it? Because we did the brain map. Then we will feed a few minutes of alpha activity to the brain. So the brain will then imitate the signal we are feeding it to it. And we have different modalities. We have, this is how it goes. So the brain is in beta, stressed. We will stimulate it in alpha. It comes together and then the brain will adapt, it will synchronize. It's the same thing that happens when you listen to music. Your brain will synchronize to the music. That's if you if I put you hardcore techno on, you will be irritated. That's exactly the same phenomenon. But here it happens in the brain ways. And if I put you classic or slow music, you will slow down because your brain adapts to what it gets. And we use this mechanism so that the brain will be few minutes in the state where we and then with the neurofeedback we train the brain so that it's able to recreate by its own the same state but because it has been in the state it's easy it's easier for the brain because it knows what it should do it's like yeah it's operant conditioning it's like training a puppy Uh, I often, I like the, the, the sentence, the brain is as stupid as all the other organs. It can be duped easily. <laughs> so, um, we have electricity. This sounds harsh. It's not harsh. Uh, for the client, it feels like if someone is tingling, picking, something like that. But for the most sensitive, we can also do only, for example, magnetic stimulation. We will use it traditionally on the gut, but we can use it on the whole body or on the, uh, or on the brain. We can also, for the more sensitive people even, we can also do some light stimulation. We have nice funny glasses. I call it the disco glasses. Um, the children love it because, oh, cool. That makes lots of nice yeah, I images, the colors. <laughs> yeah. Then we have this one is for for people on the spectrum. And this is where a lot of research is actually going on. And it shows really, really, really specific for autism, really promising results. Um, the research is done with lasers. As we are not doctors, we are not allowed to use lasers. But we use LEDs. LEDs uh, work as well. Uh, it's different. There are differences. One day we will explain you a little bit more about that. But OK, it's divergent, non-divergent. OK. Uh, but the effects are the same. And we have this nice helmet, uh, which we put on. And this will uh, act. So this is 
transcranial infrared stimulation. That's the photobiomulation sounds nice, but intracranial, you got the idea. It's light who goes through the skull. It will hit the brain, hit in a gentle way, and this will uh, have an, 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 uh, an, an effect at the cellular level where we, you will get ATP. ATP is energy, and we need energy uh, to to be able to change, and it will put the, st the the brain in a neuroplastic state where it's easy to change. And it's about self repair. It's antioxidative, anti uh, inflammatory, and so uh, you will find also a lot of uh, applications from the the, the, the photobiomulation because for dental care to, for the wounds to heal for neuropathic pain for a lot of different things we use on the brain we don't work on the body that's not not our part um so the, here you find a, a, a schema or how it works we this this helmet here i think we have 280 leds uh which diffuse the, the light and then on top of the light certainly there are different light waves it's not a, a hair regrow helmet. It's not. It's not about hair regrow, because we have a different light light wavelength. We use above thousand nanometers, which is a specific light which goes deep into the skull, which is good for the brain. But you have also other frequencies. This one here, this for example, this is a light um, a V light Pro, which is about eight hundred ten, which is also good. But this this doesn't go into as deep. And it's only in specific locations, but that's not a topic. We will talk more one other time about that. These are examples of the studies going on. Uh, mainly, they use laser. Mainly, why laser? Because you need less time exposure, and this and the light travels deeper. But as I said, only in Luxembourg, at least, only doctors are allowed to use laser. Um, so we use LEDs. We have similar results, but we need longer exposure, exposure, yep. exposure, and then you get the same results. And then comes our fantastic. I like the tool. Uh, 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 it's called the Safe and Sound Protocol. Um, I like. I would like to insist on the word safe. It's about restoring the feeling of feeling safe in the nervous system and it uses music as channel to go through the ear and go onto vagus nerve and restore a vagal um, uh, positive state because you have two systems in the in the nervous system you have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic sympathetic sounds nice but in fact it's the activation so guess what what is overactivated in people on the spectrum? The sympathetic. The parasympathetic, on the opposite, this is, uh, I'm, I'm open to connection. I'm here. I'm feeling the others, but I'm not stressed. Uh, too much parasympathetic, it's not good. It's like, again the dose. And with the safe and sound, which uses music to go specifically, filter music, uh, to go into the uh, three ears, and then go into the nervous system and then restore this parasympathetic activity. And it's specifically, uh, also it helps with trauma, PTSD, sleep, and so on. Uh, safe, uh, so Unite ELS, so the Integrated Learning System, this is the company who does that. It's based on a theory of po uh, polyvagal theory from Stephen Porges. Um, it's really helpful, um, for example, we had recently a client for digestion problem, someone who has swallowing problems. Since 10 years, you, Melanie, you remember the client who had the swallowing problem, who couldn't, who couldn't no. eat, the man, we had the whole family, we had the girl, the mom, and then the, the, the dad came, came in. I and will remember, had, you will need to give me the name after that. No, after, not here. Okay, he had swallowing problem since 10 years. He went to every doctor. He did every exam he could he could do. But the combination of the safe and sound with neurofeedback, at one moment he said, oh, I don't have my swallowing problems. They are gone. It was never a target of us, but it was a byproduct. And swallowing and, and ingestion 
there's a common problem in, in the spectrum too. Yep. They're really sensitive to it. The other one is the sleep issue. The other symptoms which really help where the safe and sound is really, um, uh, is the anxiety. Uh, yes, these are the, I, uh, they're missing one, which is the fourth one. Okay, I will find it back again. Um, so typically people on the spectrum, they have an autonomic dysregulation. Their nervous system is chronically into the fight mode. And what we need is to get not only the brain, but also the nervous system. And we, we use also direct uh, vagus nerve stimulation, but the main part, can the people can do it at home with the safe and sound. It works over an app. You need headphones. And normally it's 30 minutes per day you listen to this specifically filtered music. It has nothing to do with binaural beats or anything you could find on YouTube. Yep. These tools, you can only access them through trained therapists. You, This is really serious stuff. It's not a funny uh, Spotify playlist. It's not that. It's really, it's really uh, strong things. And people on the spectrum, for example, normally people should do 30 minutes of listening and people on the spectrum, often they tolerate only two or three minutes and then say, it's enough, it's enough. Too much change, too, I feel something, I get, I get uh, nervous. Okay, then they do less and we have many fantastic results. I think I will soon hand over. Do we have now the example of Leila coming or when is it? Sorry? Leila, when is the... When is Leila coming? Oh, uh, just a few flu, flu, right. okay. flu slides later after okay. the case. Okay. So uh, what are the symptoms which can be helped, where we can act on? As you see, the list is long. Um, um, so the first one, this is the obsessive, the repetitive things. The What is it? Uh, OCD means obsessive compulsive uh, disorder. Oh, we had, for example, clients who wash their hands, I don't know how many, a hundred times a day since mm -hmm. few years. Yeah, for six One week. years, I think. Yeah. yeah, gone. Ticks. So, the, 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 for example, the movement and the noises with the tongue or whatever. The most movement. common one is... <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> That's uh, when people do it, like it's a stress sign a lot. Yeah. yeah. This is the most common one. Emotion management. The mood, uh, uh, when we write down mood, anxiety, and things like this, that doesn't mean everything will be gone away in by magic. There will be fluctuations. It's a progress. It's not on off. Oh but... yeah, no, we're not magicians. No, <laughs> we no, don't have no. Power. <laughs> yeah. It takes time. Takes time. The next one, the lack of flexibility. This, I think, is the is our most common goals. This is what we want to achieve in the brain. This yes. is the outcome. We want the brain to be flexible. Not too much, because then it lacks of stability. But, but it should be. Yeah. Should so be. adapting, yeah. reacting to the stimulus at the right intensity. If there's a tiger, you need to get to have adrenaline and dopamine and whatever to act. Anxiety but, to stay but alive. If, if the sign, if the signal of the SMS makes the same reaction than the tiger, then you have, then you overregulate it, then you lack flexibility. So, cognitive difficulties, social and relational. So again, we are not magician, but it opens up the possibility of relationship. It's still up to the client to learn it and to uh, to improve his communication skills and social skills, the neurofeedback will not replace social trainings and, and, and exposure to things. If you only stay at home, then we'll not learn to, to, to communicate with people and to be social. Okay. The sensory difficulty is really, really important. We will try to, to, to work on this mu rhythm. If the mu rhythm gets away, you will have less sensory problems. This is easy like that. The sleep is one of the first thing we address because if the sleep is not there, there is no learning. Epilepsy, seizures, this is a, a quite more medical one. Um, digestion, auditive, and whatever. And the combination, a byproduct, is the result in self-acceptation and self-acceptance, which will result in better self-esteem. 
Okay. Can I hand it over to you? Yeah, yeah, no yes. problem. <laughs> so as Francois said, it's not magic. <laughs> it's not super power or super trick. Uh, there is some case where it will not work as it should be. So what is the first one uh, element that can alter the neurofeedback effect is the um, environment. So if you eat too much sugar all the time, if you don't drink water uh, when you come to a session, if you drink a lot of coffee, then a lot of alcohol and do drugs and don't do sports, just get in front of the TV and don't sleep. What are we supposed to do if you arrived at a session with no energy, a lot of um, sugar and coffee activity in the brain? So it's a nervous brain. Uh, he is lacking energy. He is, uh, you are irritated. He gets a headache because you're lacking water and hydration. So we are not magicians. If the condition in the beginning are bad, it's not going to help. So it's the same with a car. If you don't put gas in your car, it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> you can push it by hand to go to the next city, but good luck, good luck to function. For, with the brain, it's exactly the same. If you don't sleep, if you don't drink, and if you don't eat well, don't ask your brain to be efficient, to have a good attention, focus, and memory. You're asking something impossible. Don't ask your phone to work if it has no battery. Yeah, that's basically the same. So that's super, super important when people come here. They need to reduce sugar, to drink more water, to do some activity. It can be just walking. You don't need to do a high sports activity, high energy. Just walking, just moving, just yoga, whatever. Something can be calm. Uh, you will need to try to get back on a sleep schedule. Don't stay on the phone until 1 a.m. and things you can get you can have energy tomorrow morning thanks to neurofeedback session nope <laughs> so neurofeedback session helps the brain to adapt more to the situation but it will never adapt in a bad situation for you same with the environment with people uh when the environment is not good like there is toxic people toxic peers at family work etc it's not going to help because it puts your system in a, a really high anxiety mode when someone is not good for you or the environment is not good for you. And we're never going to be able to put your brain in a state that will, it will feel okay with bad behavior against you. Yeah, no, impossible. <laughs> and the first one that is the one that is affecting the most of our treatment is the compliance. <coughs> That's linked to environment too. If we tell instruction to people what they need to do during, before, or after neurofeedback and they don't do it, or they do quite the opposite, we can do anything. If you don't want, if you don't want to get uh, involved in neurofeedback, in therapy, in whatever you want, it's not going to work. It's the same with pills. If your doctor prescribes you vitamin or pills and if you don't take them, on the the good the good uh, doses the good day etc it's not gonna work it's the same <clears throat> so it's it's working your feedback will work but it will need then more session then you're just putting more session and more money <laughs> <coughs> so if you're not ready to get involved with us because it's time we involved a lot with our clients we have because it's a passion then yeah if you if you're not ready maybe do something else and wait and try to think about uh, about that also too many medication or health problems or stuff in the brain can alter and make the the, the treatment longer than usual because it affects the brain functioning so it's not a problem but if you have specific health condition or health disease or strain i would say uncommon stuff better take a phone consultation first so we can check if you can do neurofeedback or if you do you should uh, try something new uh, try something else sorry so francois was speaking about that in the beginning but just a reminder we don't have a lot of questions so that, that that's great apparently we we 
are explaining things well. But if you have any question about side effects, uh, I don't know, reimbursement, how it works, have a look on the website. We've take the, we have um, made all article and stuff about it. And if you don't find answer to your question, reach us. So now about more maybe case study, that's the most interesting thing. So you can have a look. I, I've put very various one. It's not the same client. So I can show you different data and different things we can do with them. So first of all, this case one was an autistic teen. So a mom is not, I've checked uh, here today, but um, it was a teen having autism, nonverbal, but the main problem from the, for the mom was the epileptic uh, crisis. They were severe, there was a lot of them, and it's not good for the brain, it's altering the brain. And the neurologist was increasing medication, but he was still having them. So it was a problem. Uh, first time he arrived to our, to our office, there was a lot of electrical discharge, super high power, uh, almost on, visible on every line. So we needed to zoom out a lot to see. So it was a high, high uh, and 15 electrical discharge uh, plus or less uh, each minute. That's that's a lot. That's a lot in eyes open condition. And so the power was above uh, almost at 10. So the average is considered between for brain uh, power is between uh, one and minus one. It was a plus 10. So imagine it's 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 considered bad if you are at plus three. So it was really bad, but the, the training went super good and we were able to stabilize the EEG. So you see there it's it's more like all the line looks more the same. That's eye blinking here, high blinking here. There is a little electrical discharge here. So we went down to two per minute. Was great, was uh, great. And we were close to uh, the average of the, the power, the average. So it was way better than before. We still need to work on that, but it was way better. That's another example. That is EEG, how it was looking before and how it looks after. I think we've done 20 sessions, actually, or 15. I can remember now with my memory, but it was, was pretty, pretty good. Uh, that's another another uh, EEG, another client with other symptoms. So there was some uh, speech delays. I think it's Leila, Francois, this one. Uh, yeah. Yes. So there was some speech problem. The brain was uh, in in uh, not developed quite good. There was too much slow brain wave. Uh, and in eyes closed, there was a lot of lack of alpha brainwave with a lot of stress, a lot of overactivation. He and the brain was not flexible at all in this condition. So it was quite a colorful brain at the beginning. And now we went on to something that looks way more, I would say, normal. <laughs> I don't like this term, but more close to the norm. Better regulated. Um, yeah, yeah. So better self-regulated. So there is there is a, a gain of flexibility for sure. There is way less slow brain waves. So the brain is back to where it's supposed to be. Still a little bit of lack of alpha brain wave, but way less than before. So that's good. It has increased. And we see here the mu brain waves. So that's a good example. She, she has them. So we need to keep working on that, but she will come again. So she hasn't finished everything. But for, yeah, 10, I think it's 20 session. And it's really, really good result. And also something we don't show people very often, but we can use in those specific cases when there is connectivity issue, autism with delayed language and stuff like that. So, uh, we can have a look at uh, what we call Loretta currents. And so as she was having problems with language, we have a look at the Broca uh, um, Broadman area. So there was an overactivation between uh, area in the Broadman area uh, between. So here you have all the numbers of the of the, the fact, Broadman area. So the between the 44, the Broca area and a lot of part of the brain, it was overactive in uh, ear beta a lot. 
and uh, also slow brainwave delta here. And so after that, we were able to better self-regulate those Loretta currents. There is less color than before, so that's great. The, there, there was a language improvement after the first 10 session already, so it was really, really impressive. Uh, I will I will show you the um, the mom's feedback. She wanted to to say explain a little bit her story. So I've put a slide about it so you can read her story. Uh, that's other client, but that's interesting. That's some questionnaire we can do with adults and also kids. So, so that's for example on other topics as depression. Uh, it was quite severe in the beginning, and then it went down to almost zero. And for example, this was a stress questionnaire. It was really high in the beginning and after the neurofeedback, it was more low. Uh, we have other questionnaires, so that's not all, but that's example. Anxiety questionnaire uh, was moderate, moderate, but slightly going down. And then after the treatment was down to one. And the most impressive one was with one of uh, an adult, a girl, uh, she was super positive on the AQ. So AQ questionnaire is basically to see if there is a suspicion of autism. So it's not a diagnosis, it's just to see if there is suspicion. She was quite positive because the norm is 26. So 30 is positive 100%. If you go to a psychologist, you will get a diagnosis. And it was not linked to uh, social anxiety or anything. It was just the AQ that was the most positive. And she was coming because she was feeling different. And after the treatment, she was under the under the positive line, uh, like she has no autism diagnose or symptoms anymore. It was super weird for her because she was feeling it. She was not feeling so different from people. She was able to get engaged in conversation. It was way more easier for her to do this. Uh, and so it was so easy that it was not disturbing her anymore. There was quite other small difference and you you can tell if you're a specialist like us like that she's close to the spectrum but it was not bothering her anymore and putting any problems so it was great it was great um so about Leila the girl we speaking that's all super good I would say miracle because it's it's super cute so the mom wrote down to me a feedback I translated it in English for you uh, I will maybe read it so you don't need to. So she said, Gislan, thank you. I don't think you're here today, uh, but thank you for, for your time. I first learned about new feedback from a mother who used the tomatis therapy and the oxygen therapy for a multi handicapped daughter, which I also used for Leila, my daughter. Then I searched the net and came across a conference on YouTube about new feedback in Luxembourg. It was Melanie and Francois speaking on the video. And after watching it, I was immediately interested. I spoke to Melanie by the phone, the teleconsultation, and then we scheduled a brain map, the first evaluation, and we did 10 neurofeedback sessions. So as she was coming from far away, for people coming far away from Luxembourg, we do intensive neurofeedback. So we do the brain map, the first evaluation, with 10 sessions in a week. It's not for everybody. It needs time to plan this because we have a super, super busy schedule, but it's still possible if you're not living in the area and uh, needs to, to come. So my daughter was diagnosed at the age of two and a half. Leila, Leila is a sweet, calm girl with mild to moderate autism. She doesn't speak, doesn't imitate, doesn't understand, and has a slightly shifty gaze. Leila at that time still wears diaper. After the first 10 neurofeedback session and the Safe and Sound protocol, there were already changes. Leila began to repeat all the world we told her to repeat with pronunciation. That wasn't great, but it was huge progress. So she was five, she's five now, and she hasn't pronounced a word since she since she, she, she's born. So it's the first word she said after five years. 
So the mom was crying when she wrote to me the email and we started crying. We, too. we started crying too. Yes. <laughs> so she started to imitate and repeat everything. She's more present with us and our glands are friendly and re reciprocal. And that's true because she came again for 10 sessions uh, in two weeks ago. And Leila was really looking you into the eyes, looking for you, grabbing your arms to get something to ask, something she was not doing the first time she was here, was impressive to see. She was really interacting with her uh, environment. So she smiled when she smiled, she smiled when we smile at her. And now Leila is finally potty trained and no longer weighs a damper during the day. So I dropped the tomatoes and oxygenotherapy because they weren't scientifically proven and there were no concrete case of autism for whom it has worked i really advise you to go and do the neurofeedback session in luxembourg they know a lot and the building is super pretty <laughs> she's so funny the initial assessment and analysis carried out by the team is very detailed and they really go deep to explain in detail the problem and dysfunction of the brain for your information i come from the east of france and even if someone told me there was a neurofeedback center near my home i wouldn't go we have already rescheduled session for leila with us so super touching <laughs> i'm starting crying again but yeah it was it was really really impressive to see how fast it went even for us because we know with developmental disorder it can take a lot of time so we were not expecting having so much effect after the first 10 row we were expecting more after 30 because she was so um so delayed and so on the spectrum uh that it takes time but amazing with the SSP and neurofeedback was just amazing to see her again uh, two weeks ago. So I can't wait for a new feedback after this 10 session now uh, in September, we'll wait a little bit. So can wait to see the effect. <laughs> so now about the process uh, appointment, if you're interested in doing some of this kind of uh, thing, we have a specific process, so we are detailing it because I know it can be a bit uh, hard to understand for everybody. So first of all, something that is non-mandatory, but I would suggest you to do is the teleconsultation. You book an appointment, we call you on the time you booked, and we discuss together uh, about your needs, about if your feedback is for you or not, etc. So I suggest you reading the website first. That will answer a lot of questions, and then you can book a teleconsultation, especially if you have something special in the on the health side. But if you don't want to use this teleconsultation, you can go straight to the first evaluation. So, but this step is mandatory to do neurofeedback because if we don't do a ev first evaluation of your brain, we don't know what is happening and what we can do and don't do with your brain and what we need to train and how many sessions you will need. We need this EEG first. Uh, so it consists of a first appointment here in the office. We do the EEG, we check your medical history, we send you questionnaire and cognitive test, the one you saw uh, just before. And then as we have everything, all the data, we write report and we see you again during a second appointment to give you the result, to explain you that's your brain, is functioning that way, that's easy for him, that's hard, that's where he has issue, that's what we can do, etc., etc. Then after that, if you want, because it's not an obligation, you can stop at that step. But if you want, you can then book neurofeedback session with neuromodulation and SSP. It's all together. Uh, so the minimum is 10 sessions once per week. They, they, it's, a session is an hour. But if we see that in your case, you need more per week or more in total, like 12 or 15, we'll tell you. But that's, that's just the minimum, so you know where to start. And then after the 10th session, we do, uh, that's in the price of the pack of 10 sessions, we do again the same as the first evaluation. We redo the brain map, we redo the QEG, you redo the test and the questionnaire. And so we meet again a second time to see the before and after and to see if you're happy with the result, if we have achieved all your goal or if you need a little bit more or if you do need something else. I don't know, go to take vitamin D. I, I say something like just like that, but that's so you get the ID. 
So yeah, that's how it works most of the time. Then for the one here that are interesting in going to the next step, we have we all always do a special offer for people. Today it's an exception. We have two special offers, so you're lucky. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, from, I can take I can take over if you want. Yes, because um, uh, normally we have a special offer. This is for people who can come to our office. Um, but maybe there are also people find us because now our website is more international and we got a lot of also requests from other countries and so on. We uh, have an offer to work with, we, we can work with clients remotely with the safe and sound protocol, not with the neurofeedback part, because obviously we cannot send you the cap and the amplifier and everything to you at home. Um, but uh, we can offer you to 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 to, pro to try the the the, the, no, the safe and sound protocol, and we normally uh, with normally the price is three hundred fifty euro, and uh, for the whole fifteen hours program, and with three hundred fifty euro we are always all, already on the cheap part because we find we found providers who sell that for five hundred or six hundred euro. And we go even down for 150 euro for one person to listen to the program during three months maximum um, and do the tests before and after, uh, get the information, how to use it, everything for 150 euro. This is not bookable on our website because it's not a process. Patrick and I didn't work on it to make it bookable and so it's uh, streamlined. You need to write us an email and we need to check also if you are if you are a good candidate because we don't this is it it's a serious tool and it it's it, it should be done seriously for this price we will ask you and this is mandatory not uh, not uh, questionable we need you to fill out our questionnaires to have an, an, a sense of uh, where you are and where you will be after okay uh, the, the, the safe and sound, as we told you, it's about teaching the nervous system, bringing it back in a safe state, teaching again the, the regular self-regulation. And then the second offer, which is more the traditional one, those people who are who can come physically to our office, um, we uh, we offer a reduction for the brain map. Uh, for 395 euro so this is the two appointments coming to us uh, making the measurements doing the analysis you do the tests at home and then the second appointment which lasts one and a half hour normally with me um, uh, we can do that remotely but normally I prefer doing it physically and uh, see also the parents um, uh, if it's about a kid and things like that uh, to get really a full view into your brain what's going on and have the explanations um, after that you can do the neurofeedback with or with, uh, with us or not it's no obligation to do the neurofeedback we had sometimes I remember we had some clients where just doing the brain map was enough to change their lives. So because <laughs> yeah. they realized say, things they didn't realize before. Um, but of course, neurofeedback it helps and it works uh, and it's quite efficacious. Um, uh, so and what is now really it's it's part of our offer. But the first one is really exceptional and this will not last. Um, the, for you will never, you can never get the safe and sound anywhere in the world cheaper than that than now with us. So yeah, if you want to talk about and talk to us, we have no secretary who will answer your calls, but you can book phone calls. Um, actually, there may be some delays before getting an appointment. But nevertheless, book it and uh, write to us if you want to do a safe and sound. Okay. Um, how to, maybe I'll let you explain how to book it. Or no, I can do it. So go on a website. The important part is if you are a parent and you book an, an appointment for your children or even a call, please fill out as a child because 
with that you will have other possibilities than an adult because we have certain times of the day who are reserved for children and so fill it correctly out it will be useful um, yeah, with the it, right name also because if you put the parents name we will have a problem because when yeah. you book an appointment there is an automatization when you buy something it sends you the uh, invoice the adult, the adult things. with your name that you booked in the service and the problem is if you book the appointment under your name and then you're interested in coming and you come again then the contability is lost because there is like too many invoice with the same name and we they're not able to understand who is who with the booking so that's why it's important just to help us gain time because we don't have time to do that <laughs> okay good so, yeah uh, i'm surprised there was no the price question so <laughs> that's usually the first question but maybe there How were on okay. the website we've done a super pretty page about the tarification so that you can have a look at everything that is existing and alternatives and stuff like that what is free how much is what so you're not lost uh, about every service so yeah okay next webinar thank you lou for doing that today <laughs> thank you lou she was she was working on that uh, we have planned to do uh, all those webinars in the next following months. So for the moment, there is no um, registration link. It's not ready. We are a little bit under the, behind the schedule, but <laughs> it will be ready. So stay tuned. You can uh, uh, follow us on Facebook because we post the event and we create it on our Facebook page. And so you can have access the link and uh, subscribe and get the notification and the access for this next uh, subject. There are already the first two, the learning disability and the PTSD, uh, already available in French on YouTube. Uh, I think she wrote down learning disability, but I'm questioning if it's not a school issue, but it's the same. So whatever yeah. <laughs> about school, school issue for kids, attention issue, et cetera, learning disability. And we are actually working on a super pretty new topic that is not well known for a lot of people. So it's autogenic training, but it makes sense 100% with what we do. So Janelle was here tonight. So thank you, Janelle, for being with us and looking at the webinar. It was a super, super day, super happy meeting you. It's So stay tuned for that. I, I, uh, I, can add, I, I would like to add something. Yeah? Yes, Janelle, will. this is a, a, a new series of webinars. Uh, because uh, I think we are sometimes we speak too long and we speak too too, too often about the same topics, and Norfolk is not the only thing which helps. So we will start a new series of webinars where we will invite uh, other professionals or other techniques to speak about what is helpful. And Janelle will be the start with autogenic training. It was one of my first thing, self-help uh, try, try, trials I did was started at, at that time. It was with cassettes. I don't know what you say. Oh, that. yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I, bought, I bought mail delivery cassettes to do autogenic <laughs> training. It was, it, was, it was fun. It worked really well. You were that we old. Other people. You were that old. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I still know what is a floppy disk, you know? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I'm still young. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, but and anyway, this is also a call for you, people who watch it on replay or watching live. If you know a topic which we should address, if you would like that we talk uh, with a specific or interview someone who does something really interesting, please write us. We are open. And uh, if you're watching us on replay or if not replay, go to our YouTube channel. We love the likes. Please like and love our video, like our videos, because this will help also other people find the topics we are talking about. Neurofeedback is not new, but it's not enough well known. And um, please share it. Share it. Yeah. Help others. Yes. <laughs> okay.
So we're done as expected at eight, eight uh, a little yeah. bit late, but it was super interesting topic. Still, people are here, so super happy with okay. that. It was super great. Maybe they're happy. sleeping, Melanie. Maybe they sleep. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> that was just super good student listening yeah. called me, okay. so I think we have the best one, <laughs> the best attendant today. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your brain time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you for your, your brain time and your brain cells availability because that was long, quite long to follow, but great to see that there was still people until the end. That's nice. Hope you've learned something today because it's good for your brain. Learn new stuff. It will help avoid uh, dementia. <laughs> so, and maybe we'll see, we'll see you soon. Yes, uh, maybe on the electrodes or maybe without electrodes. Yeah. Have a good summer, have a good vacation, and see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.